Greetings, Earthlings. Today, uh, we're spoiled by having our nice digital multimeters. And this one isn't even a super duper high end jobby. This is a five and a half digit meter. But uh, let's take a trip back to the olden days, the before times, when, when, before we had digital multimeters, and look at what it took to get a precise resistance measurement. Now, you'd start, uh, and this wouldn't be very accurate, you'd have a, an analog meter like this, except yours would be bigger and it would be solid black and it would say Simpson uh, instead of tech power. But you'd, uh, you'd take your analog VOM, you zero it out there, and you measure your resistance there. And you go, yeah, it looks to be about 100 ohms, maybe a bit more. Uh, yeah. So, but suppose we want it to uh, like four digits of precision. How would we do that? Well, let's suppose to start that I had two precisely matched resistors. Okay? Doesn't particularly matter the value of them right now. And I connect them in series. You see that? Those are resistors. Uh, and put a voltage across them. Then the center point here, because they're, they're perfectly matched, the voltage at the center point will be exactly half of whatever voltage I put in here. And this is our common reference ground. Okay, so, yeah. Um, and then let's take uh, our resistance that we want to measure. Okay, we'll set those aside for now. Take our resistance that we want to measure and we'll put it in series with known resistance values uh, and put that same voltage across it. Then when our unknown resistor matches whatever resistor this is, then the voltage in at the center tap will be exactly half of the voltage I put in and exactly the same as the voltage that I got from this resistive divider. Awesome. What good is that? Well, now suppose we have a method to detect or determine whether two voltages are equal. Uh, and that's just can be done with, a, with an analog meter. Uh, zero center meter is a, is a nice, easy one to use. This, this thing wouldn't be very helpful in this regard. Uh, but suppose we have a, a meter who, which is centered at zero and will deflect to the left or the right uh, if, there's a, if there's a difference in voltage. We don't really care how linear this uh, meter is, how you know, accurate at full scale it is, just that it can indicate zero. Okay? Then, with that set up, we can measure this resistance. Well, that's called, and there's actually a fancy name for that, and it's called a Wheatstone Bridge. And this Leeds and Northrop, oh, there goes my resistance there. This jobby is a Wheatstone Bridge in a box. Uh, so we have a voltage we can put in here. This is our test resistance. Uh, we have a divider over here. Oh, so um, if, um, well, well, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Uh, and, and here we have selectable precision resistances going from, in this case, zero to 9,999 ohms. So we can use this to measure our unknown resistance there. Now you may think, oh gosh, that's expensive. You need like 10 resistors for each 
decade there, you know, you need a one and a two and a three and a four and a five. Well, you need a zero, you know, zero to hardly use as a resistor. But that's actually not true. You can do it with four. Um, if you're willing to put them in series, you have, if you had one, two, three, and six, and zero, of course, then you can get uh, all your digits between zero and nine. So um, that's just an aside. Okay, let me readjust the camera. Okay, here's our setup here. This represents a battery. Uh, here's our Wheatstone bridge. Here's our resistance that we want to test. Uh, now, we know it's because we checked it with the analog meter that it's in the range of 100 ohms. Uh, and as I said, this goes from zero up to 10,000 ohms. But we can change the range of this by changing that divider on the left-hand side. If you remember our two resistors, okay, and I had them equal, and if they were equal, then uh, this would directly match this. But if, say, the top one is one-tenth of this one, then if this is one-tenth of that setting, uh, then I get equal voltages again at the center. So we have this uh, multiplier here, and we have our instruction card, and it says, let's see, we thought it was a little over 100, right? So if it says you want to measure 100 to 1,000 ohms, you set it on 1 tenth. Okay, I could have guessed that. So I think that's 1 tenth. It's, that says 0.1. That says 1 tenth. Oh, they don't agree. Okay, so we think it's about 100. So this is reading 100 to 1,000. So 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that says 100 ohms. And nothing, nothing. Well, that's pretty close. Well, you can see at 100.1, it moves. At 100.0, it really doesn't. And then going down here, 99.0 definitely moves. 99.5. Can't tell anything at this point. Let me see if I can measure the lead resistance. Well, this can go down to uh, below 10. I have to turn that on. It's zero, but it's coming up. Okay, it's less than one ohm, but more than 0 0.1. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, it's about 0 0.3 ohms. Yeah, I mean, I call it close enough. Okay, 0 0.3 ohms lead resistance, 100. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, so 100.1 looks to be too high. Yeah, you can see that move. So going back to 100, I don't see much movement. So I would say 99.97. Is what I is what I read with this approximately. Uh, if I try to go to nine 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 nine, waiting, waiting, waiting. Well, at 
doesn't really move either. We'll go until we see some actual movement. That move? I don't know. So the voltage, I may need a higher voltage to get a more reasonable deflection. Tiny deflections here in this range. Saddle. That moving? Yeah, I see. I see some slight movement there at nine 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 six. I think that moved at nine 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 seven. There's a slight movement at nine 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 eight. Ooh, ever so slight at 9999. So, no, and it, uh, and it moves at 100. So, I'm going to, yeah, so 9999 minus 0 0.3, 9996, something like that. Four wire. Uh, resistance measurement, by the way, let's see. So on two of these, one, one set of probes puts out a fixed known current value. And that current flows through, there's unknown resistance in the leads, the leads, the, the test leads plus, plus the leads here. Um, but the current must flow through the leads and the resistor. Okay, so if we have a known current, we know what the current is across that resistor, and then, or through that resistor. And then if we measure the voltage across the resistor, the input impedance of our voltage measurement is in the megohm range. So, you know, 0.3 or 0.1 ohms of lead resistance is negligible, uh, will not affect the reading to any significance. So we get a highly accurate uh, reading. 9994, I was saying 9997. Well, that's pretty good for, you know, 60-year-old technology, I think. 